This is my custom blade controller for Galaxy's Edge lightsaber blades. And I want to go over where the project is at this point. Now, this is something I've been working on for well, over two years now. And I think it's time to start sharing this with everybody else. In the description down below, there's going to be a link to a GitHub repository that I have set up that contains the code, the firmware, that goes on that microcontroller and controls the whole thing. It reads commands from the hilt and controls the LEDs appropriately, as well as turning on the voltage regulators when it needs to. In the readme file that's included with the uh, source code is uh, a list of uh, materials, components that are needed to build one of these, as well as links to Oshpark, where you can order your own version to assemble, like this one here. Uh, as well as a description of how to program it, how to assemble it, uh, some tips, some, some links to places of where you can order components, where you can order uh, or, or examples of devices you might use to program the microcontroller that's on this thing. Uh, all of the information is there in the GitHub repository. You can go take a look at that and start ordering parts and PCBs right now if you want. You will however run into an issue or two which is kind of what I want to talk about. There is a global chip shortage that's been going on now for the last year or so and it's still going on and who knows when it's going to end. As a result of that some of these components are not easy to get a hold of. For example, both voltage regulators, these two chips down at the bottom here, both of them are on back order. If you were to place an order today, you would probably have to wait two to six months for them to arrive. You might encounter a similar situation with the microcontroller as well. There's a limited supply out there right now, there are more that are on the way, but again, once the supply that's out there is exhausted, you're probably waiting two to six months before the next supply arrives. So if you want to assemble one of these today, you might be stuck waiting a few months for that. That's why I want to get this stuff out as quickly as possible so that anyone who's interested in making one of these has the opportunity to do so, to put their orders in now to try and start seeking out all of these components, all of these materials, so they'll finally be able to assemble one, program it with the code that's on there, modify the code if you want to, to add features or modify features. Now I want to talk a little bit about the, the firmware, the source code for this thing. The code that I have right now is not, not at all going to be the, the final version or the version that I'm going to consider to be the final version. There are at least a couple dozen changes uh, that I want to make to the code. The firmware as it is right now works fine. It, it does the job, and I think most people would be happy with it, but there are certain tweaks, certain changes to functionality that I think are necessary. For example, one of the functions of the firmware that I've developed lets you pick different colors, and the way it works is you put it into a color picker mode, and the blade rotates through a bunch of different colors. The problem is the, the color itself is being generated dynamically. It, there's an algorithm. And uh, that algorithm that I'm using can't produce the color white. So you can never select a white blade as a custom color. All the other colors are available, but you can't select white. Maybe that's not a big deal because there are white kyber crystal, crystals. So if you wanted a white blade, you can just get a white kyber crystal. But I think, I think white should be an option that you can pick. So I need to modify this algorithm so that way you can do white. And then as I started thinking about that, it's like, well, not just white, but maybe different levels. So if you want a, a, a light blue color, it's blue with some amount of white added to it. You can't do that right now. That algorithm, again, needs to be modified to introduce that sort of extra color. So I'm, I'm working on something like that right now. The point of all of this is that the firmware that's up there right now is not necessarily going to be the best. 
there will be future updates to it, and those might be better in the eyes of at least some people. So if someone were to manufacture one of these blade controllers and sell it, that blade controller is going to be programmed with whatever firmware is available at the time. And that's sort of something I, I'm not sure about. This is something I've been thinking a lot about, and, and, and I'm curious if anybody has any opinions on this. Let's say for the sake of, of the, the example, I start selling these. And if you buy one in, let's say, March, um, the firmware that's going to come on it is the version that was available in March. And then a week later, I create some new effect and people who buy the the board after that that time period in you know, April or May, they'll get the, the updated firmware and you'll be stuck with the older version. Is that is that fair to people who are buying these? That's that sort of an issue that I'm trying to debate with myself uh, right now. And the way I'm trying to get out of that problem is to include the ability to reprogram the microcontroller. Uh, it requires the purchase of additional hardware, but in theory, anybody could go open their blade up and reprogram this thing. Is that enough? And I talk about selling it because, um, well, I expect a few people are going to want them. And so I've been building them uh, in my uh, spare time. I've got a couple of the Oshpark PCBs that I did just to prove that the PCBs that are out there that you can get through Oshpark work. And then I have a, a batch that I ordered through a different company so I could get the white, the white uh, solder mask so it matches the, the stock blade controller. And started assembling them, trying to get a feel for how that process goes. Because, uh, again, part of this is I think people are going to want these. And so I'm probably going to sell them at some point. It's when do I feel comfortable enough selling them? What, what When is, does that point get reached? I don't, I don't know yet. But the other reason is I want to create a series of videos about making these. About, you know, how do you solder such tiny components onto such a tiny PCB? There are techniques that make it actually a lot simpler than it may seem. And I want to go over that as the assembly. I want to go over how to program it and the, the device, the adapter that I use to program this and how, you, you know, there are other options out there and what you would need to program it yourself. And uh, the installation as well. You have to remove the old blade controller, then solder this thing in place. And that is certainly not a straightforward and simple job. There's a, a bit of work that goes into that, and I want to document all that in another video. So th there'll be a series of videos covering how all of this is done. And maybe once all of those videos are done, once I feel like I've shared all of the information about how to make them, how to program them or reprogram them, uh, then, then maybe I'll feel a little more comfortable selling them because the information on how to reprogram it will be out there and, and there'll be a video that demonstrates all the, the processes involved and the hardware involved to, to do that, the software involved as well. Um, one other thing worth showing real quick is uh, if we look on one of these PCBs here, down at the bottom here, you can see there are a couple of extra holes here labeled B1, B0, and ground. Those B1 and B0 uh, through holes connect to unused I.O. pins on the microcontroller. I included them with the idea of somebody could come up with a new feature down the road or, or add their own custom feature, maybe hook up a sensor to one of those or a switch or something like that and add extra functionality to the, the, the custom blade controller beyond what it does, you know, out of the box for lack of a better term. The thing is, I've sort of already come up with one idea that I want to show you real quick. This is a blade that I have modified. It has one of my custom blade controllers in it. And to those B1 and B0 holes that I showed you, I have attached to them a pair of switches, this two position dip switch. And I've cut a hole out uh, through the, 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 the sleeve here at the base of the blade to allow me access to those switches. And again, this is sort of experimental right now. I'm not, I'm not sure 
what I think about this position. Part of me thinks it fits really well. Part of me thinks having to go grab a pair of pliers or, or tweezers, I should say, or something, a toothpick to get in here and flip those switches isn't great. I wish it was something that you could switch by hand, but at the same time, this is going to be put into the base of, or the socket for the blade in your hilt. So obviously it can't stick up. It can't have anything uh, going above the level of the uh, this black plastic uh, cover. I don't know if that's the way to go, but I've added a couple of switches. One of them uh, right now, the way it, it, this is in the firmware, one switch will uh, enable a stock blade behavior. So the blade will behave entirely as a stock blade would, except it will recognize orange and cyan kyber crystals and ignite orange and cyan. Other than that, it behaves just like a stock blade. The second switch is a right protect mode. When the when you turn the lightsaber off, if you leave it plugged in, if you leave the blade plugged in while it's off, after 10 seconds, the microcontroller that's in here goes to sleep. That's to uh, conserve power. Right before it goes to sleep, though, it will store whatever the current settings are for the blade, the, the color, the animation effect, and whatnot. It will store those in EEPROM. Uh, it's a type of memory that will persist after power is removed from the, uh, the, the microcontroller. So the idea is you would turn on the blade, set it to whatever color you want, turn it off, wait 10 seconds to ensure that the uh, the settings get saved to the microcontroller, then unplug it, enable this right protect pin or switch, and now you can try, you can plug this back in and try changing different colors and it'll change different colors. But then as soon as you unplug the blade and then plug it back in, it's going to restore to the settings that were saved before you enabled the right protect. So if there's a particular combination of color and effect that you like and you don't want to lose it and you don't want to go through the hassle of having to reconfigure the blade every single time, that that switch is there. And then there's a third option where all the switches are turned on, which will lock the blade into whatever setting it is and you can't get out of that setting. So if you've got a particular color, a particular animation effect, when you ignite it with both switches enabled, it ignites as that color and that effect, and you can't change it no matter how quickly you turn the blade on and off, no matter how many times you turn it on and off, you can't change it. You're locked, you've locked the blade into that setting, so you'll never lose it. In my head, these aren't switches that you would be using very often. That's why I feel that this setup where it requires tweezers or something to, to get in and configure these switches is okay. Maybe these switches could go somewhere else. You could maybe put them up here and then they could stick out and that would be okay because they're not tucked away in the sleeve or in the socket that the uh, the blade plugs into. It's above it so you could have switches that have long stems on them that stick up out of the blade that would be much more easier to activate with your fingers. Or maybe the switches go somewhere else or maybe you don't do switches at all. Maybe you do a sensor of some sort. You could do a tilt sensor. If the blade is ignited while it's upside down, it behaves one way, but when it's uh, ignited right side up, it behaves a different way. There are all sorts of options. So many that I can't explore them all, but at least the potential for exploring those options is there for anybody who wants to. And the, the firmware that's on the GitHub repository has all the support for these switches right now. That also provides maybe uh, an example of how they work and how if somebody wanted to do something else, hook these up to a sensor or a different type of switch. Maybe that's an example of showing you how you could go and modify the code to support that, that sensor or that switch that you want to use. I think that covers everything I wanted to say. Links down below to the GitHub repository that has the source code and a list of uh, materials that are needed to assemble one of these. Of course, uh, links to Oshpark, where you can order the PCB. Links to Easy EDA, which has the, the, I guess what you might call the source PCB design file. So you could copy those and make changes to the PCB itself if you wanted to. You could change the text, change the picture on the back, even though 
That picture of Frank will never be seen by anybody because it's covered up by the uh, string of LEDs in the blade. And there will be a video series covering assembly and installation of one of these custom blade controllers. I will be working on that. I have, again, assembled, I don't know, a dozen, two dozen of these custom blade controllers already, and I've filmed some of that, so I have some some footage already to share. Um, but I need to add a little bit of structure to it, so the videos won't be coming out right away, but they're on their way. And that's it. That's the state of the custom blade controller. If you have any questions or, you know, start working towards building one of these yourself, if you have a question or a comment about this, feel free to say something in the comments. I will see it. And that's it. Good luck. Have fun.